Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a brand new episode of Kick It Net live from Doha, Qatar, World Cup 2022. I'm with my homie Jefferson again. Yes. And today we got a very special guest, actually one of my fellow countrymen, Maz Mirzadeh. What's going on, boys? One Good. of the hosts of Lad Bible, or the host of Lad Bible. Yeah, the, the, let's say the host. The yeah, host, yeah. the host. I prefer yeah. to say Maziar. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. He knows, he knows, yeah, he knows. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. What's going on, are you good? I'm good, how are you? Good, man. Bro, well, thank you, bro. We're in, we're in here, Doha. Yeah. It's yeah. amazing. Life is a blessing, eh? Life is, I'm blessed, bro, I'm blessed. Yeah, man. But yeah, I'm going, I'm going, I'm, I'm gassed, going in a few games today. Okay. And I'm uh, going to go see Messi live in the flesh for the first time. So. Wow. wow. Can't ask for more, do you know what I mean? Bless, bro. Really. The goat. Is Messi the goat for you? Oh, easy, bro. Yeah. <coughs> Ronaldo, he's physically, like, he worked hard to do yeah. what he did, but Messi's just naturally gifted. And mm. Is he the all-time goal for you? Oh, easily, yeah, 100%. Ronaldo's, like, I got a really good quote yesterday. It was, um, Messi's God, and Ronaldo is the friend of God. Okay, I like to say Ronaldo's Superman, Yeah. and Messi's a gift of God. I like that. Yeah. I can take that one. I'll take that one. I'll take yeah, it's better, bro. He's better. <laughs> He's better, bro. He's, He's better, bro. bro. I love you got the lingo as well. We're gonna have a good one. It's gonna be a good one. We know ourselves. We know ourselves. Yeah, man. So much like you're, um, you're, you work for a lab Bible. I saw on your Instagram you interviewed a lot of, a lot of, yeah, big players, uh, uh, artists, etc. Who was, which interview was the most special for you? Oh, that good. you were really like, damn, I'm gonna meet this guy and have a conversation. Yeah, that's with crazy. Him. Do you know what? There's been a few in the past. Obviously, Ed Sheeran, probably, I'd say, in terms of artists, probably the biggest I've interviewed. Yeah. Um, but in terms of my personal, it's got to be Roberto Carlos and Gilberto Silva. Just because of growing up, watching them yeah. to play, icons in the game. And it didn't really clock until after. I was like, wow, I was just chatting to Roberto Carlos and Gilberto Silva. Um, so, yeah, for me, personally, them two. And then also, a weird one was uh, Emil Smith-Rowe. Oh, sick. Yeah, 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 he was just a bit, a bit different. He's a bit, you know, he's a bit of a road man, to be honest. So mm. I enjoyed that. Uh, it was good fun. And uh, he was a fan as well. He's seen my stuff before. So it was, again, just a bit mm. of a mind-blowing moment for me just to be like, oh, he actually knows that like, he's seen my stuff before. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, that, I'd say Ed Sheeran, uh, Anthony Joshua as well. Got to throw that one in there. Mm. Um, yeah, man, I've been blessed to have some Okay, if you would describe Lad Bible in three words. Oof. <laughs> what would that be? For oh, lads. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get <laughs> sacked here. Uh, you're trying to get me sacked, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, God, that's a good question. I'd say alternative. Um, f- fun. And uh, I'm trying to think of a, a final one. I'm gonna say Maziar again. Yeah, what, 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 what would you, come on, you, you must you must know that Bible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How, how would you describe? I would say also like because um, uh, I'm new in it. I don't digital entertainment. Yeah. yeah, yeah. New digital fast entertainment. Do you guys do you guys have you been framed? Have you heard of that before? You have been framed. You have been framed. Is that a TV program? Yeah, so okay. it's, it's like a TV program essentially where so back in like the nineties, whatever, you should send your home videos, your you know your your tapes. And they used to show it, like any kind of fails, people falling ah, over, yeah, yeah. and you get paid like 200 quid to ah. to, to get it. So it's, it's basically that, but mm. in the digital age. Ah. Essentially, because so we, we pay contributors, you know, you send your, yeah. your funny video of you falling over, or whatever, wherever it might be, and then we'll pay you, and then, yeah, that's ah. pretty much. So, so I, like, I'd say it's like a you've been framed, but so in the, the digital So the inspiration age. comes from home videos, funny home videos. Yeah. So we call it UGC, okay. which is user-generated so content. Yeah. yeah, okay. So yeah, that's basically where our majority of our stuff. That's how we started, mm-hmm. um, and then it's developed now. So I work for the originals team, so I'm a creative producer yeah. for the originals team. So I create all the original content. Whereas mostly before, like let's say, going back four, three, four years ago, we switched from UGC much more to trying to create our own original content, which we've got a whole originals team now. Mm-hmm. I think 15 strong, and uh, we churn out you know on YouTube, Twitter. Mm-hmm. You know, TikTok. And, and within lad barbell, like yeah. sport is also very important for lads, and especially yeah. football, right? Hundred percent. You take care of that department, right? Yeah, yeah. So I um I work for Sport Bible, cross lad barbell in general, but mostly sport. That's my passion. Um and yeah, it's it's, it's sick. I, I get to create content that's uh, like I said, original. It's fresh. It's new, and it's much more for me personally. I'm all about humor, trying to be uh, a bit different with it, rather than the sit down serious stuff that you probably see from the BBC or these mm-hmm. big. You know, corporations. I try and do a bit of a different spin, mm-hmm. a lot of formats, mm-hmm. a lot of uh, quizzes, like fun stuff. A bit more different to what you'd probably expect from like, a big publisher, mm-hmm. really. And you and you translate that digitally to the social media. Exactly that, yeah. So mo- mostly short form content, um, 
I don't, you know, I've done YouTube and stuff uh, in the past, mm -hmm. but it's mostly short form, TikTok, mm -hmm. Instagram, Twitter, all that jazz. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, just, uh, I, I do everything. So I, I come up with the idea, I, I produce it, I present it, I edit it, and I package it out as well. Wow. So I'm involved in the whole... How, how big is your team? So I, I'm our own team. Wow, okay. In my, so I work in it as part of the originals, yeah. the originals department, which is about 15 strong. But I'm like my own self-serving ah. team. So I sort of go, I'm very much live events. So okay. you see like, for example, one-off events, that kind of stuff, that'll be me. Yeah. Uh, and I'll go and basically be the sort of person on, on the ground. Okay. So, so that conversation you had with Robert, Roberto Carlos and Roberto Silva, yeah. what type of format did you implement in that interview and how did you come up with that format? Like yeah, so that was, um, that was for the 2002 Brazil World Cup documentary. Okay. So um, I thought, what can we do? So Roberto Carlos, Roberto Silva, Arsenal legend, Real Madrid legend. So it's the 0304 Galacticos versus the 0304 Invincibles. And I just done a, like a format where I pit against one player for each, pit them against each other and get them to talk about it. And it was good fun, man. Roberto Carlos was a good vibes. And I told him when I, I tried to do Gilberto Silva versus Zizou, <laughs> and he just started, he just started wow. creasing it. Yeah, okay. so it was unfair. It was unfair. Yeah. But I, I, you know, I set him up. You know, so we want to get the reactions, right? Mm. Um, so yeah, I thought, how can I do it best? And that, and that was the best way to do it. Okay. So yeah, man. I just, yeah, I was trying to think of What's bespoke to them and like mm -hmm. what's special to them? And you know, they were so iconic for both teams. I thought, what's a good way to try and get some kind of content out of that? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I just sat down, gave myself a couple of hours, mm -hmm. to think of what a format, and came up with that. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. How did the how did your love for football start? Where did it start? How did it start? Which player? Yeah, so, uh, funny if I actually told you guys uh, off camera, but yeah, it was um, Patrick Cliver. Yeah. Um, so when I I went to Barcelona, I was about twelve. And uh, I got the full kit, Barcelona. I should tell a lie, I think it was 98, 99 season actually, tell a lie. Um, so I went, it must have been 8, 9. And I got the full kit, Patrick Cliver, Cliver on the back. And uh, yeah, I was a big fan of Patrick Cliver and Barcelona for a long, long time. And then I had to stick to my roots, which is Brighton. Uh, so I went from Barcelona to Brighton, which... Yeah. How did you get into media? Because media's evolving, changing, was it always a dream for you to, to do something in media? Yeah, 100%. My, my journey is a bit different to what we'd probably expect. So I went to uni, did sports media, which is mm -hmm. uh, was my degree. Uh, but then when I left uni, as you know, my parents they were like, chase the bag, Maz. Yeah. Chase the bag. Don't worry about, you know, yeah, your degree, yeah, yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get the money, get the money. I was like, okay, cool. And not that I was influenced by that, but obviously, it's, you know, I was like, okay, cool, let's do that. So I actually went into, so I've done a call center job. I don't know if you guys know what a call. Call center is yeah, yeah. So oh, cool. oh yeah, a cool call center. Sorry, a yeah, cool. A call center. It's a call <laughs> center. A cool center. Yeah. Like, a cool center, yeah. Is that you? Yeah. Is this what you're doing? Yeah. Is this what you're doing? Is that you? Yeah. Is this what you're doing? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I see. You, I see. You. Um. So yeah, I was in a cool center. Uh, yeah. Everyone yeah. happy with that? Yeah. I was in a cool yeah. center. Um. So yeah, literally doing sales. Mm. Literally just calling up, cold calling. So. Oh man. Yeah. It was rough, man. It was rough. Then I went into insurance, and then I went into recruitment. So, as you can tell, I didn't enjoy it one bit. Uh, and I got to like 26. And I was like, man, this, this, ain't for, this ain't for you, man. Like, you need to chase your dreams. Like, do, you know, you got to do what you got to do. And even then, I was like, 26 is not old, but I felt old. So I was like, if I don't do it now, I'm never going to do it. Mm -hmm. So I applied for Lab Bible when I joined uh, a team called Odds Bible, which is one of our smaller pages as a social editor. So just doing the editing, the posting, all that kind of jazz. Done a full you stage. Are, you already teach yourself. How, oh no, but no, because of the university, you know how to edit. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. and also, I did. Sorry, I did a, a YouTube channel on the side with two of my boys. We did a football show on YouTube. Mm -hmm. which got like got to about 10, 15 k subs, which was not bad at the mm -hmm. time. Um, and then I was also doing my Instagram page, like a fitness. I'm not in shape anymore, but back then I was looking all right. Um, <laughs> and so I was doing like a food page, fitness yeah. page. Um, so they saw that and they were like, look, we rate what you're doing on like as a h side hustle. We've obviously got a full-time job in recruitment, but we rate what you're doing in, in the social media stuff. So we're going to give you a chance kind of thing. So I did a full stage interview, got the job, and then fast forward four years, I'm now a creative producer. So I started as a social editor and uh, fast forward four years, I'm mm. at the World Cup So like you guys. Such an interview, like uh, the, that, the whole application, like what type of information that you need did you need to present to them um so the first stage was just a chat with the with the line manager uh the second one I had to create uh, uh examples of work so i remember he, he tasked me with i think it might have been the euros at the time or potentially even the world cup actually so he told me like to create a uh a magazine type vibes and just basically showing the whole production and i had to create like uh posts 
uh, what I'd post during the World Cup. Basically just a, a lot of the stuff that you'd see on the feed. So for Instagram, for example, uh, what you'd see on the feed, he was like, I want to see examples of that. You know, come up with what you'd do if this situation happened or vice versa. Then the third one was another phone call one, I think, just to, again, just to have a chat with me. And then the fi final one was with the co-founder, mm. uh, the co-founder of the company. And I just sat down, went through my CV, had a chat with him and uh, yeah, got offered the job on the, ro on the spot, which is okay. pretty nuts. Yeah, okay. I don't think it happens wow. a lot, uh, much, but yeah. And then from there on, you grew into your current role. Yeah, so I started four years. Yeah, so I started as a social editor, very much behind the scenes, just posting stuff. And then after about a year and a half, uh, I was like, "Look, I want to be on screen. This is, my dream is to be a presenter." Okay. So do you know Ardy, the rapper? Yeah, Ardy yeah. Graham. Yeah. So <laughs> Brighton boys. Yeah, come on, Brighton boys. So I said to my, I said to uh, one of the guys that was the head of content at the time, I was like, "Look, give me a chance. Like, I know Ardy. Like, he's from my same place as me. Can I chat to him?" And he was like, oh, do you know what? I'm not too sure. And I was like, come on. So he was like, okay, cool. Go do your thing. So I did a Zoom interview with him because it was obviously during the pandemic. And um, I did I did a full interview, went out on YouTube. I did like three clips of TikTok. I think over three clips, I think it, was, it hit about 8 million views over the three clips. So, you know, do you remember back in the day when they used to do the dancing, the Tony yeah. Lopez and that? Yeah. Yeah. So some, he also was like, um, state of your body, <laughs> mad. When that was going crazy, yeah, I interviewed him around that time. And uh, I got some good viral clips out of it, and yeah. And basically after that, he was like, fair play. Okay, well. <laughs> you can do this. Uh, nice. So, Would you describe that as the uh, most defining moment in your career, that uh, that, that interview with Artie? Yeah, I'd, I'd say that. It was my first little big break within Lab Bible. Yeah. Also, I've done interviews before and whatnot on the side, mm -hmm. but never for, for Lab Bible. I think it was my first ever big, you know, face to face interview even yeah. though it was over zoom yeah uh, but it was just good vibes right away. like his mum was on the zoom mm. I was just oh, wow. like, yeah like, as in like at the beginning not yeah, on the camera yeah, yeah. but like just chatting to his mumsy and like chatting to mm. him and uh, we just got on straight away like it was good vibes straight away and he gave me some good stuff and obviously yeah the clips went super viral on tiktok and um yeah man I, i'd say that's definitely i wouldn't say it's maybe my defining moment but i definitely say it was the the start of what is mm. now sort of yeah. become so, but what is your most defining moment then Oh, you're coming with a good questions today. I wasn't prepared for this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you didn't read us, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, you're doing the thing, so. Um, what is my defining moment? I suppose, do you know what? I, I hosted the Brit, Brit Awards. Oh, sick. Oh, wow. Yeah, red That's carpet. epic, bro. That's yeah, epic. Red, red, red carpet. That was sick, man. Wow. It was crazy. We had the, so as you go in, the second spot was for a lab Bible. So when BBC, lab bible and then all the rest of the media wow. which was crazy like Sick. so me and my my cameraman we rocked up it was just a two-man operation yeah and we rocked up and we're like oh this is crazy like we've got a mad spot like, as soon as they go from bbc they go straight to us crazy so yeah man that was probably the, the craziest that's when i interviewed at Sheeran, um ksi uh i'm trying to think who else now i feel bad uh can't think of the others on the spot, but yeah, mm. it was a crazy experience, man. Doing the red carpet for Brits was just, I had that's to pinch dope. myself a little bit. That's I was dope. like, mm -hmm. this is nuts. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll probably say that's the- From uh, call center, Yeah, people. man. It's crazy, and yeah. it I was cold calling people on their yeah. phone, and, and then I'm speaking to KSI and Ned Sheeran. Okay, dope, man. It's crazy, man. And uh, your parents, did they, did they, have they seen your work lately? Yeah, do you know what it is? And again, you can probably empath yeah. empathize, but, you know, they're not really... Uh, they don't understand. No, they don't get it still, no? I don't think. Okay. I don't think they understand still what... It's like if he comes home and, Dad, I interview Ed Sheeran, his father's going to be like, Who is Ed Sheeran? <laughs> 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 Who is that? <laughs> the accent's on point. <laughs> <laughs> Mashallah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go do your job. No, but you know, all, all joking aside, like, recently, I, I feel like they've been showing a lot of love. Like, my dad messages me, like, I'm proud of you and all that. Ah, and it's nice. It's dope. sick, it's sick. But obviously, because... Like again, they don't get it, and um, and even like, cause I've had my like mental health struggles. I really struggled with my mental health and stuff. Mm. And even that, like, my dad didn't understand. So like, the first thing he said, I was like, I was like Dad, like, I'm really struggling, like, really bad mentally. He sat me down and goes, Do you know what you need? A shot of whiskey. <laughs> so, I, was like, I, was like, I don't think that's gonna help. <laughs> I don't think that's gonna help my mental health problems. Come but yeah, <laughs> do you know what I mean? So like, that just shows the kind of man he is. Yeah, yeah. like, yeah, he doesn't really get the, I suppose the the new age that we live in and the Obviously, we have very different pressures, you know? Like, he, he lived through the Iranian Revolution, which is yeah, crazy. Like, yeah, man. And he went to prison because uh, he was, like, a prisoner of war. Mm. Not prisoner of war. Uh, against the regime, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, so, like, he's been through a very different experience. And I, I never compare myself to his struggles. Obviously, I've got my own struggles in a di very different way. 
but he's very yeah he's very old school very different but my mum my mum is always good as well yeah. and they but again they don't really they, they don't really get it yeah. but which I mean, interview they were like okay that's nice because at, when I started in media, yeah. I, so I was really like into, uh, I was doing uh, interviews with musicians and hip hop artists. Yeah, yeah. And my parents were like, oh, who are these people? You know, and I, I had to explain, yo, these people are big. But once <laughs> I started doing football interviews, I was sitting with, for instance, uh, uh, Memphis Depay, Edgar Davis. My dad get it. Oh, okay. You're, you're really doing something big. You know, mm -hmm. which interview was to your parents or maybe your father in particular that you're like, okay, my son is doing something interesting probably uh, might have been a roberto one you know roberto carlos one but even then he, d he doesn't individually send a video or like oh that was sick mm -hmm. never it's just sort of like oh yeah you're doing well yeah i was yeah. like yeah yeah i'm trying typical <laughs> typical, typical yeah yeah, typical. yeah, yeah. But you know what if he's with his friends my son <laughs> oh yeah trust me roberto carlos <laughs> sitting <laughs> no trust me that's what they always say like yeah, yeah they're like um oh, oh my mom was like oh yeah he works in lab bible Works yeah. in Labour, like yeah, really, yeah. Very, even though they don't have a clue who Labour is, yeah, like, yeah. Hey, it's a really big thing in social media, and like, yeah, 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 they're proud of me in, in that sense, which dope. is great. Yeah, that's dope. That's a beautiful story. What are, man. what are your What are your next goals? What, who 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 would you like to interview? Uh, what's your bucket list? <laughs> Patrick Clavert. Let's get him. Wow, yeah, Patrick Clavert, yeah. man, come yeah. on. He's actually here in Qatar, you know. Serious? Yeah. Is he? Here? Yeah, of course, bro. Okay. Okay. Come on, you're the plug. I'm I know you're the plug. I know you're the plug. I know you're the plug as well, but you're the you're the plug plug. He's the plug. Yeah, can, you give me, can you give me an interview? With I can ask. I can yeah? ask. I can ask. I can I'll ask. find out on Sunday. Maybe so you have to make a video like, yo, uh, my first jersey was, was yeah. with you on the back, you know? Nah, uh, nah, I'm, jo I'm not joking. I would love that. Yeah. But yeah. Um, He does work for B in sports here. Serious? Yeah. That's sick. Uh, that money. I'm trying to think here. Yeah. Gary Neville sold, his, sold that out as well for that. Okay. Um, who would be my ultimate What interview? would the setting be? Would it be a one-on-one -on -one interview? And what setting and what, which person would you like to interview? Yeah, definitely one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, I feel like I do better, my best work. Actually, I, I like a group setting, actually, because you can banter in it. You can banter, yeah, you yeah, can have yeah. a bit of chat. Um, I like to joke a lot. Um, who would be my ultimate player? Maybe someone from, like, the national team, for like Harry Kane or... Um, no Brighton legend? We don't have any, bro. <laughs> 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 of course, that's why I asked the question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guy Butters, do you know Guy Butters? No, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't think you would. I know Leandro Trossard. Leandro Trossard, he's a baller. <laughs> yeah, bro. But we got very talking to Brian. We got a sick team right now. But back yeah. in the day, yeah, Gary Hart. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know, yes. I don't know. <laughs> it's the weird thing. Michael days. Brown, baby. <laughs> random English names. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, he was good. He was good. He was like Gary Stevens. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, he the jersey's nice, don't you? Stadium is nice. Thank you, thank yeah, you. That's, yeah. uh, I'll take that. Um, but yeah, to answer your question, maybe a high profile, um, big name in football. Because yeah, I love my football. So it'd be sick to interview someone high. But like, got to say the Messi, Messi, Ronaldo, that would be like the, the ultimate. But Messi, interview Messi is, is very boring, I think. Yeah. He's like a machine if you talk to him. Do you know, Ronaldo, I thought the Pierce Morgan interview yeah. was crazy. Because that was like the a, way yeah. Pierce Morgan basically poking, fed. Yeah. No, he just, he yeah, goes, every, look, but every, the words? Everybody could say that. Yeah, but obviously they discussed. But he, he, yeah, but no, he of was course. like he really going into his ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How does it feel to be the best footballer on the yeah, planet? Yeah, come on, man, you're second. Stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> nah, Get nah, to know. Nah, nah. But no, like he, he, no, he, he done very well in that interview. So but high yeah, profile like, uh, English. Yeah, would, yeah, high profile would, English. Would you or, be? Or like, would you like to be as big as Piers Morgan in one day? For example. So someone, someone asked me like, so someone I know they were like, Maz, I can see you having your own talk show. I was like, I don't know about that. I don't think I've got. Again, maybe I'm putting myself down a little bit, and maybe I should, you know, back myself a bit more. But I don't know if I'd ever get to those kind of levels because, like, let's say back home, we've got Jonathan Ross, we've got Graham Norton. Mm. Uh, they're all like, oh, you yeah, know, Graham, your Norton show, yeah. Graham Norton show, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then obviously you've got the Mo Gilligan show now, Muni Chihuahua, who's sick. Uh, there's some really sick people at the moment in the scene. Um, I don't know if I'd ever, I don't know if I want a talk show. I think I just want to do like. Just create. Con I know it says, sounds well cliche and like cringy, but I just want to create content that people enjoy. Mm. The best thing for me is when my boys or people I don't know come up to me, bro. That video made me crease. Like you were measuring some guy in the streets, blah blah, blah like that yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah, that's very cliche, bro. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true though. Do you know what I mean? That's no, right. it's true. It's true. Like I which, just want to create good content. Which footballer would you like to interview? Like it would be like. Boom, bucket list. It's got to be a Ghana, Ghana man. Nah, man. No, nah, he knows everybody. <laughs> yeah. No, I know he knows it. He's, do you know what? If he really what, what wants, he can go on the pitch and put a Ghana jersey on. It would, it would let do him you know what? I want to say one thing before we go any further. This guy's knowledge, football knowledge, crazy. Cra Yours awful. But 
Stevens? Why? Who's Gary Stevens? Nah, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. No, but manager. elite, elite, elite. I gotta just shout you out because you've you, got bro. elite, elite ball thank knowledge. You, thank you, thank yeah. you, thank you. You told uh, me a few things. Who, who would I like to interview? Yeah, I think it's easy, man. Ronaldo. Ronaldo, yeah. Yeah. Lima. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. bro. Oh, I think oh, you, nine, can, yeah, you can yeah, laugh yeah. in as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. That would be good. I'll talk uh, talk about his time at PSV in Eindhoven. PSV. Yeah. He, he was saying that he doesn't score many goals at PSV. Yeah, he I did. Know. I know that. I, know, yeah. I didn't say his peak wasn't at PSV. That's what you get. From his fine old fan, isn't he? So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's an Ajax fan. Yeah. You know? yeah. But that no, was good. I had the year I had Ajax I won the Champions League, he was a top scorer. Yeah, I had a soft spot for him because, mm. like, the way he was destroying the whole Dutch yeah. league. Late. Ajax didn't lose any match apart against PSV. So, yeah, that was interesting, man. Elite. But Ronaldo Nazario Lima. Yeah, man. Yeah, that'd be sick. Anyways, guys, I think uh, this uh, we can round it up, eh? Yeah. My guy. No, I appreciate you guys, Yeah, man. thank you for coming, man. Thank you so much. I hope Brighton get, will be champion, but I don't think it we're will gonna get. We're going to get... Uh, Yo, the European. win against Chelsea yeah. was epic, European though. sport. We're going to get European sport. Yeah, yeah. Top, top five? You heard it here first. Nah, uh, se- top, top seven. seven. Top seven, eh? Top seven. Okay. That would be beautiful. That would be beautiful. Roberto De Zerbi. Okay. Okay. I know he is we, again. We deserve it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you like that one, yeah? yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, kick it next with Maziar. Maziar. Let Bible. Love, Let Bible. Appreciate it, And guys. we out. Yes. Thank you.